Hey everyone, how you doing? And in this video, I just thought we'll talk about the new analog pocket update. I know it's been a while since I made a video. It's been a rough December with family stuff and the holidays. I am back to talk about the update as well as some other stuff that I'll make other videos on. But first, please leave a like, subscribe, do all that great YouTube stuff. And now we'll just get into the video. So can simply get to the update section by going to their website, analog.co, go to support, go to pocket. And then from here, you can see the uh, view release and here you can check out the release notes. Now you can also do this via the, the pocket updater. So that's also another way you can do this when you want to update things. It also just will grab, pretty much grab uh, grab the download and drop it right in the root of your folder. So that's also a fast way of updating it too. But at least here, if you do it like this, well, you can just download it, drag and drop to the root of your SD card. So very similar as well, very simple. But at least here you get a chance to check out the release notes. And you can also check out the MD5. So hey, if uh, you don't feel safe about using the updater, if you like my, something that might break it, I doubt it, but here you can compare the uh, bin file with the MD5. So here's the release notes. Now there's been some few uh, notable release uh, like the library and I say that's pretty cool. And we'll sh I'll show it to you as well when we move over to the camera side. But real quick, let's just talk about it. We have the uh, library has been added. It's a cool little feature. I wish it was there from the beginning. I would have recorded all the amount of time that I have been playing my cartridges, which is pretty cool to see along with the little image you get after you add the images to the uh, memories part. Now, that being said, uh, we'll just start recording <laughs> as of today, as of as of today as a new update. But hey, it's not better late than ever, I suppose. But also keep in mind, this is for cartridge only. This is not gonna be for the cores or anything like that. So, let's just go over it real quick. You have the library added, like I mentioned, the reference, le uh, reference level database to catalog your game collection and the games you play. The updated the library database improved safe state organization so we'll change that out we'll, we'll check it out uh improved screenshot thumbnail quality that's cool remove sc uh, screenshot wait time that's always welcome a little faster i wouldn't i don't mind it fix screenshot browser when displaying more than 128 files that's that's always nice they did a lot of uh looks like quality of life updates is what it looks like and they've added the library which is pretty big i wish this was a final but this is still technically a what, what are they calling it a beta 7 so this is still not the final release they are really dragging their feet when it comes to these releases if i remember correctly it was supposed to be september all this was done but here we are was that four months later and I'm sure there are plenty of people who are still waiting for the pocket, even though they said they were going to get it by the end of December. So, uh, yeah, analogs are uh, not known for their quickness or their response time when it comes to uh, responses. But that being said, they fixed about the uh, file browser uh, crash when resuming into non-existent folders. So they did a lot of fixes. They added a user survey uh, service menu. Okay with various useful support tools. That's pretty cool. Now, Open FPGA, they did some stuff too as well. They improved the Open FPGA platforms, menu access time, so that they speed things up. It looks like they speed things up across the board, if uh, if what I'm getting is correct. Uh, they fixed course settings, uh, menu breaking after a screenshot. That's pretty important. And they've added a dock display. Speaking of docs, it's been pretty much a year since I've ordered mine and hopefully they get it out sooner than later the way I can check all this stuff out on the TV. And let's see, they improved or docked, they improved HDMI connection handling, improved the EDID display mode detection. It's pretty cool. So at least they're, they're, they're actively working these fixes. It seems like they know they have problems and they're working on it. Now, I would say their release times for these uh, updates is, is pretty pretty far apart. So let's see. This is the latest version, 1.1 beta 7, January 13th. The other one was November 5th. So that is looking like a little over two months. And before that was a month. 
So judging by this, you can get anywhere between a month to two months, it looks like right now for these uh, 1.1 betas. Man, this was supposed to be done by October. Man, that sucks. But hey, it's better than, uh, where is it? Let's see, ah, yeah, here we go. From version 1.0a, which is the one that we all started using. Actually, it was this one. But uh, December 30th, it took three months. Uh, 1b to 1.1 was, that's a nice five months and change. All right, so what we're gonna do now is let's just move over to the pocket and let's just show you how it looks there. All right, everybody. So here we are on the pocket side. So that's really quick. Let me just show you what the library looks like here. So if you look here, you'll see the library. This is the biggest new addition. So here I've already gone ahead and added just about all of the games that I have. I probably missed a few. I might be scattered elsewhere, but I got a I got a small collection. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who got much bigger than me, but it is pretty cool to see. Now, if you look closely, let's just start with Aladdin since that's all the way at the top. It will tell you the amount of time played, zero minutes. Uh, it was added today. So keep that in mind. Unfortunately, it won't capture any of your gameplay prior to, uh, to the update. So that's being said, this is being categorized by the images. If you hit, uh, which one is it? I believe it's, no, sorry one of these buttons select select will change it between images to list and here it's just a list very simple it says GBA GB or GBC and then you just select it and grid is exactly how it sounds now here's a little weird I would have preferred this to be centered I honestly think this is not how it's supposed to look but I don't know maybe it's how it's supposed to look but I would have preferred this to have been centered personally it looks a little looks a little weird being off to the right, but that's just me. And honestly, I feel like you could have fit a fourth row. So they definitely there'd definitely have room for improvement. Now, now one of the things I want to mention is this will only work with official cartridges. Uh, and by if not actually not sorry not official cartridges, um, either games that are like. So far, I've seen translation ROM hacks work. This is a ROM hack of, which one is this? Uh, Pokemon Prism. So this does not read it, I believe, uh, at all. So whenever you start up, it just goes straight to the game. So let's just play. Now you see how it goes straight to the game? That means it's not gonna show up in the library, unfortunately. So your ROM hacks like that will not show up. Let's see, here we go. Let's just go back to this list. This is Pokemon Prism, it's not, it's not showing up. But, ironically enough, here is a translation ROM hack of Fire Emblem. And this one will actually show up. So if you hit play cartridge, oh, okay, so I got a, of course I got that error. Let's see if I try one more time. I have to clean it out. No, oh, there it is. Here it is. This is a ROM hack of this specific game and look you can remove from the library if you wanted to or it's already in the library now so i can play from here or if you go to the library section let's go look for a fire emblem uh, under f there it is you can just go here see some information about it i wish it gave you more information it does not this is what you get kind of like how it just gives you the same information in the beginning but you can just hit play from from the library itself which is pretty cool and there you go so that being said, uh, what else do I have actually? Let's see. Anything that just start that just goes straight into the game will not work. Here is an EverDrive that I put in a Japanese Pokemon uh, Red version, and it's gonna be the same thing. It goes straight, skips out the beginning part. That means it's not gonna show in the library. I wish it would. That'd be kind of cool to have the EverDrive showing up there, but it does not. But keep that in mind, any game that just skips the information section and goes straight into the into the game will not show up in the library. I got, that's right, Crystal Clear. So it's going to be the same thing. I've yet to see Crystal Clear show up in the information section. It does not. Therefore, it will not show up in the library. But that being said, the library is still very cool. 
Uh, you can also, let's go to memories. Here you can see your screenshots. So change it around a little bit. It's, it looks good. Uh, too bad you can zoom in. I wish you could have zoomed in. That would have been like awesome to see it full screen. But all you can do is options and you delete or delete all. So here are the screenshots. I don't think they change anything else. This is it. Uh, let's see. That's as close as you can get to zooming in. What else we have? Save states. They're still the same looking for the most part. You got a little bit more information. But let's just try. Let's try. Here we go. Pokemon I Choose You. This is a Game Boy Advance video. And ironically, I think I have it here. Is this the same volume? No, this is not. That's one of the other games. But if you go to library, you it will actually recognize this as well. So it recognizes the Game Boy Advance videos. It actually recognizes the... Where is it? Uh, let's see if it shows up. It should have showed up. There's no reason why it wouldn't. Come on, where is the... Maybe it's in the G. Ah, it does show up game, uh, the Game Boy camera, too. The Game Boy camera does show up here. That's that's pretty cool. But here it is. I think this is the right one, right? Uh, maybe. Let's see. Yep, there it is. So it loads straight into the game, as long as the game is in the cartridge. Now, I never got any of the adapters it never it's still waiting so i can't tell you any of the any of the any of the other systems but for game boy advance game boy and game Boy color it works perfectly fine ah uh, there's, there's the pokemon intro can't believe they're retiring ash side 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 sad comments they're actually retiring him but uh all right <clears throat> So the same thing, I brought a whole bunch of games down, but they're all pretty much the same. It, same thing for Japanese as well. If you have a Japanese game, it will show up here too. So any game that's pretty much official, or I guess like a translation hack of an actual game, not like a whole brand new game, looks like will work. Let's see, let's go to Pokemon for that. Uh, it's a pretty cool way of categorizing what games you have. Obviously, you just can't jump into it. It doesn't save the ROMs. I guess that's what the, what the cores are for. But here you go. Here it is. Pokemon Green or Pocket Monster Mador. And just like anything else, you can play right into it. You can look. You can check out the memories. So that's cool. That's it. You can just load straight into the memories. That's pretty cool. That's actually a cool feature. You can just go straight into the memories. Now, I wonder if you could do that from here. Let's see, play cartridge. Oh, you can. You can just go straight into the memories even from here. That's actually pretty useful. So, let's just show you that. Let's go from here. I got Kingdom Hearts, one of my favorite games for the Game Boy Advance. And it starts up, you go down. I have four different memories of this one. Uh, let's go to the, this is the exact same game I had when I, when I was a kid too. So, this is actually my save file. There we go. And there you go. You load right into it. All right. Let me just let's go around him and bam. There we go. Yeah, see? So, yeah, this is a great game. If I had a PS2, I would have played this when I was a kid. Now I actually have this game on the PS2. There we go. Cool. Uh, okay, let's quit. So that's a cool little bonus feature. So our Japanese games work no problem. Same thing for the Ruby. Uh, there it is. Ruby. This is the Japanese version. It even says the region is Japan. Same thing with the Sapphire. Region is Japan. But here we have the... Actually, I have both Emerald. In English and in Japanese. Here is the Japanese Emerald. Uh, and here's the English here's the English Emerald. European and USA. So it's pretty cool. You have no problems it, between differentiating between, between those two things. Uh, you know what? Uh, let's see. Developer. If I can statistics. Here we go. No, 
that's always cool. I always forget to leave this thing on. Show you how it's running. Yeah, dry battery. I actually got this from uh, syndico.com. It's a pretty cool little site if you want to get anything from Japan. Highly recommend it. It's not a bad site. Just picked up a new 3DS for my for my kid. It's a good place to get stuff. And then if you know how to hack, you can always just hack the 3DS and make it region free. So that is pretty much in a nutshell the big feature for the newest update. I like it. It's a welcome update. I I wish they rolled these out much faster. That'd be my biggest gripe right now is that so much time lags in between it on top of just the time it takes for people to get these into their, you know, to their hands. The faster that people would get this, the more people would buy it. I think that's always the biggest turnoff for people. But thank you for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe, do all the great stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one.